What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here. It feels like it's been a while since we've done a little standalone Palantir update, kind of analyzing what's been going on with this company here. If you guys have been around this channel for any extended period of time since we've been doing this for, I believe, over two and a half years at this point, you guys know that Palantir is one of the stocks that I've really liked for the long term for quite some time now. So again, if you guys do enjoy these types of videos here, make sure you guys drop a comment down below, hit that subscribe button, and make sure that you guys are coming to the YouTube live streams every single morning. But we have a lot of interesting things to talk about with this stock here. So we're going to do a little bit of a brief technical update here. We also have a brand new partnership that Palantir has engaged in with its AIP platform. And we also have to talk about this Jeffrey situation where I think this kind of feeds into a larger conversation surrounding not necessarily AI companies, but Palantir specifically as to what a lot of major investors or the market as a whole is probably missing about this company here. Now, again, full disclosure, I do own shares of this company. So again, I'm going to do my best to provide an unbiased um, perspective on what's happening right now. Right now, obviously a lot of good things are happening here. And again, I like to be optimistic when I am thinking about companies companies that I like, but granted, cautiously optimistic here. So let's get into this, some of this information, guys, because I think these are going to be things that you guys haven't heard before in a different way of thinking about companies like this. So just the brief technical update here, let's kind of go through what we're seeing on Palantir right now from this daily time frame. As you guys all know, uh, today, relatively good day for Palantir here. We are up at the time that I'm recording this video, about 5.11%. The daily time frame here, there's a lot of noise on this. We've had some really, really great opportunities with some swing, shorter term swing trades with this stock over the last basically six to eight months or so. To me right now, there's not really a great opportunity for any of those. So I'm kind of staying away for any, from any short term swing trading positions with options here. But when we take a look at Palantir on the weekly time frame here, you can kind of map out this little zone that we see kind of between this 1360 and really right up to this 16 area here where Palantir really like to jump out of here and use this little zone that we see in here as kind of a level of support. Now, it is a very large range, again, a three-ish dollar range there. But again, with a stock such as Palantir that is going to come with a lot more volatility and be a little bit more sensitive to market moves, it is pretty much obvious at that point that you're going to see uh, uh, some of these larger ranges uh, when these stocks do start to consolidate or form these types of ranges, very similar to what we talk about a lot with the ticker uh, like Mara. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at here for Palantir, just kind of this technical update here. I would expect to see a little bit of a jump out of this, but again, short term, I'm really not planning on doing a whole lot unless one of my setups form. Now, what I really want to talk about first with you guys is this downgrade by Jeffries in which they call Palantir overhyped AI, which to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If you've been following Palantir for any extended period of time, they've been using quote unquote artificial intelligence in whatever form uh, you kind of want to uh, classify it as for many, many, many years in order to to make sure that the companies, governments, and organizations that they're working with are able to be two things, and this is the main thing, more efficient and able to make better decisions. Data is incredibly important. If you are able to analyze the data that you are receiving better than your competitors, then you are then able to make better moves on the chessboard to basically outclass your competitors and grow faster and effectively make more money as a business. Now, what they effectively say here is calling Palantir Technologies overhyped AI, Jeffrey's analyst Brent Thill on Friday downgraded Palantir's stock to underperform. Now, you're probably going to see a lot of people say, well, Palantir sold off a little bit and then recently rallied back to the upside. Could have this been something that, well, the analysts are downgrading it because they want to buy it. Again, we're not really here to speculate. I really want to talk about the facts here. So, the one thing that I want everybody to really realize and think about very logically is, yes, Palantir has had a very, very significant move to the upside in 2023, but I want you to think very hard, and I'm going to explain this here, but this is going to be kind of a logical exercise that you guys as the viewers should go through in whatever stock that you're actually looking at to actually understand why those stocks made the moves that they did. It's most of the time not going to be because of what you're seeing in the news. Again, Palantir stock downgraded by Jeffries called overhyped AI. Is that the case? Well, to me, I don't think so. Here's why. When you look at this longer time frame chart of Palantir here, this is the weekly and we're going to be shifting back to the daily here. 
when you look at what happened with Palantir, we saw this earnings back here in February of 23, which was covering the, the last quarter of 2022. And then you saw this first quarter of 2023 uh, earnings report coming out in the beginning of May, which is when Palantir really started this aggressive move to the upside. Now, yes, we did make some pretty significant moves in the beginning of January, but nowhere near as large as a company, the biggest probably AI-related company that a lot of people saw making large moves last year, NVIDIA. You saw NVIDIA get a lot of this AI hype here, which Palantir, if it is going to be one of those stocks that is going to be benefiting from AI as much as these analysts think it is, why didn't it make that significant of a move? Here's why. And this is where I think a lot of people overcomplicate Palantir, and they don't necessarily need to. It's really all going to come down to with this stock here, it, it, almost in the most simplest form, their earnings. Why did you start to see Palantir running to the upside? Well, you had these two consecutive quarters of profitability here. So this one came in right here. You saw a nice move to the upside, but it wasn't very long lived. Some of these analysts and some of these large market participants might have been thinking, well, this could have been a fluke. Well, that next earnings that comes out, they do it again, and then you start to see them stepping up to the plate. You saw the decrease in stock-based compensation. You saw a lot more of these kind of everyday companies, not necessarily government contracts being handed to Palantir. Granted, they were still getting a lot of their government contracts, but that diversification of their clients was what a lot of investors, large money players, and honestly myself as well, we wanted to see those things as well. So when you look at this stock here, yes, they do use AI. Yes, they are a really powerful data analytics company, but calling it an overhyped AI company, I don't think that's the proper classification of what we're dealing with with this stock here. We have a company that's amazing at analyzing data and is able to help other organizations in a wide variety of sectors make better decisions. That's what this company is. It's data-driven decisions. Now, yes, they use AI to do that, but again, calling it an overhyped AI company, I think is a little bit of a stretch. And then going off of this concept of earnings, guys, we are going to have an interesting catalyst coming up in the near future here. Uh, let's actually click on this, see when the exact kind of expected date uh, that TradingView is giving us here, Wednesday, February uh, 14th of 2024. So in about a month's time, we'll be getting Palantir's fourth quarter of 2023 earnings report, which again, are the things that I'm most interested in, in seeing because of what this stock and overall the market has shown what can happen if this company is able to consistently report good earnings now again in the month of december we also saw what well we saw uber and a couple of other companies get bumped into the s p 500 and palantir did not now with those uh consecutive quarters of profitability and some of the other metrics there palantir does qualify for s p inclusion which can be another catalyst in the future am i saying that it's definitely going to add it uh, get added um in 2024? No, but it is definitely a possibility. Now, I want to talk briefly about this new uh, partnership that Palantir has also engaged in as well. Option Healthcare Select Palantir's uh, artificial intelligence platform for enterprise-wide digital transformation. Now, when these deals and partnerships come out, um, you typically are not going to be receiving a lot of the details on what the deal actually is. So that's why when you see Palantir releases a deal, yes, they can have these decent moves to the upside. Um, but since there's usually not um, a price tag attached to these, some of the government contracts actually do, some of the contract extensions do. Um, but these uh, companies that are not government organizations, you're typically not going to see a lot of these price tags uh, attached to them and how much Palantir is going to be getting paid uh, for their services here. So then again, you go back to their earnings reports, which is what you then have to look into. But again, the important thing about this, Option Care Health expects to use Palantir's AIP, artificial intelligence platform, across nurse scheduling, patient onboarding, purchasing optimization, and supply chain execution, among other potential use cases, which again, Palantir is going to be very good at helping them out with. Very, very, uh, very, very solid data analytics, making them more efficient and better able to make good decisions in the marketplace to make themselves a more profitable company. And again, as we've seen with these trends over and over with Palantir, showing a lot of these different companies and showing these case studies and what Palantir is able to do for these organizations is going to help them get more clients in the future. Now, again, that is also an element that helped them get that NHS deal as well. And I know a lot of you viewers here, 
maybe uh, are on some of the, uh, the kind of two sides of the fence there on whether you not uh, whether or not you want them to continue getting these large government contracts. To me, at this point, I would say go for it to them. They are showing that they want to diversify uh, their clientele into less of these government organizations, or maybe not less government organizations, but adding some of those normal companies in there as well, which I think is a great thing. Diversification of clients is going to be very, very important for them over the long term, because remember, if a heavy concentration of their revenue is concentrated in these government contracts there, well, that does provide a little bit more risk to investors if something does not go completely correct. So the diversification is very good. So guys, that's really going to wrap it up here for what I have for you guys on Palantir today. And I think kind of to wrap this all up in a little bit of a bow, I would say try to not overcomplicate this company when you're doing your analysis. I know we can get super deep into what Palantir's technology is doing, how the large language models are working, how the artificial intelligence works, which different companies can benefit. But I think a lot of that can lead to some analysis paralysis. Um, for a lot of you guys who are new investors, who are new to the market or may not have um, the expertise in some of these AI and data analytics platforms. I'll tell you right now, I'm not an expert on large language models or artificial intelligence, but what I can do is read financial statements. And with this company right here, I think they're trending in a very, very positive direction. And earnings, as we've seen time and time again, and I've mentioned a lot in this video, to me is gonna be the main driving factor of where the share price is gonna go in the future, which is why I pay so much attention to this company when it is reporting their earnings. Because again, there are a lot of things that the market may not like about this stock right now, what is going to change that? Their earnings. So guys, that is mainly going to wrap it up for this video here. Again, all of these things, very positive for Palantir going forward, uh, new AIP clients. Again, I, I still think that the market in general is kind of misclassifying this company or just not fully understanding uh, exactly what they need to see out of this company in order for the larger money as a whole to start really pouring into this thing here. But again, earnings will help that out a whole lot. So that's going to wrap this up, guys. If you guys wouldn't mind dropping a like, dropping a comment, hitting that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you guys on the morning live streams every single day. Peace.